Hello you marvellous lot, it's Mega Gran here again with another episode from one of Vintage Beef's Omega Minecraft servers, the one where we're building a zoo. Mm. Now we're nearly at the stage where we're going to be doing our first exhibit and I did ask you in the last episode if you were building a zoo what exhibit would you build first? Now I had a few responses from that question. The first one from Will Kuzma who suggested a flamingo exhibit and Sebastian Gloomblade suggested a butterfly house. Now I loved both those suggestions however we had two suggestions for African wild dogs. One from Tinnakin and one from Sierra Hetzel. So up to now, unless that changes over the next week, the African Wild Dog will be our first exhibit. Now the first building is going to be the Welcome Centre and I've been thinking long and hard about that over these past few weeks. And I've decided what I'd like to do. It's going to be a little bit different and I'll give you a little bit of information about that at the end of the episode. So I'm going to inspect our boundary on my trusty steed and while I do that I'll show you the final preparations we made before we start on our welcome centre. So carrying on from the farm that we built, the iron farm that we built last week, another thing that we needed was some farms so that we could trade with villagers for emeralds. So then we could trade with villagers for books. So the farms that we did was a carrot farm and a potato farm. We could have done other farms, I suppose. We could have done a wheat farm or a beetroot farm, but I wanted to keep it simple. So we just had these two farms and I've built each one in a chunk. And I chose quite a simple design that you could find anywhere on YouTube if you just searched for carrots or potato farm. So the villager stands on a block. In front of him is a fence with a hopper underneath and the farmer farms the field and then throws some of his carrots or potatoes at the villager standing on the block. And of course the villager won't get them, poor thing. They actually go in the hopper and then the hopper sends them down into the chest at the bottom. So quite simple really. And they're quite easy to build and quite quick as well. You can get them up and running in no time at all. So once you've built the nine by nine, you then have to build this little compartment where the villager stands. And he stands over a block on the middle hopper. And the fence goes above the hopper in front of where the villager will stand. You need a composter in the middle so the farmer has a workstation. And you do need to cover that with something so that the farmer doesn't get in through the composter. I've seen them do that. So I usually cover it with a light piece of glowstone or something like that. And then just to neaten it off, I tend to put something on top of that as well. I think that looks neat and tidy. I quite like it. So before getting your villager in, you've got to make that little compartment secure so it didn't actually get out. And then I had to go and find a villager for this bit because I didn't have a spare one. But I did have a farmer. So I tried to release him into the farm, but he was a bit reluctant to go. So I had to be quick with my pick. There you go. He couldn't get back in. I was too quick for you. Yes, never mind looking at me like that. This is your job. Then I went off to find some other villagers. There was a little desert that we used before to get some villagers. And there were a few there, if I remember rightly. So I followed. Got me tackle out. I have a special chest now with all the stuff for capturing in it. There it is. So I just needed a few cages. Don't know if there'd be that many, but I got them out anyway. Just put my cage down, opened it up and shoved him in. Quick as a flash. So I managed to fill all my cages. So that was pretty good. And I thought while I was out and about, I'd do a bit of collecting. So that was another tarantula. As I was out and about, I thought I'd do a little bit of exploring. It wasn't long before I came across something very interesting. I thought it would have been looted, but it wasn't. I was quite lucky, I think. Don't know about the Curse of Binding book, though. But there were a few things in there that I found useful. So that was quite good. And, of course, the TNT. You've got to take that, haven't you? And then I spotted another interesting thing over here. Some kind of village. I was quite intrigued. And the closer I got, the more intrigued I was as well. I've never seen anything like it. And I went in, look at all those bookcases. It's a pity I'd already got my set up. Hmm, nice. But the general design of this and the use of these blocks was gorgeous. I loved it. I loved all the pink stuff. A bit girly, I suppose. 
Mmm, very nice. They liked melons. Oh, yes, and there were the villagers. Oh, my goodness. This was really nice. I couldn't stop looking at it. It was really, really good. I wonder if there was more of villagers like this that I'd never seen before. I would have to do some more exploring, really. An anvil. Gosh. So I wonder if there's villagers in each of the different biomes with the trees somewhere. Because this is obviously mahogany. More villagers up here. Very nice. Oh, a chest. Cookies. Not had any cookies yet in this game. Nom, 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 nom. Very nice. Rainbow eucalyptus sapling. Very nice. I'll have that as well. Oh, I broke a vine, I think. I think that's what that's what that was. <laughs> Made me jump. But I could not stop looking at it. I think that's what this is. It's mahogany, isn't it? Yeah, it's mahogany. Nice. I'd got some saplings of that, though, so I put that back. So I couldn't stop looking around and seeing all the different buildings in this little village. They were very, very interesting. We one or two villagers were awake as well. Better watch out. There's witches about. And zombies. What was this round here? Was there anything in here? Oh, this one's unoccupied. I wonder if there were villagers that did go in there. Or maybe they were the ones that were out and about. I don't know. It seemed a quite a big village as well. Nice. Oh, it went on all the way down here. All oh, they seem to be growing these melons. Oh, hello. Shouldn't you be in bed? Oh, oh, you can't all fit in there. Oh, my goodness. What's that? Oh, what's this? I haven't seen this before. Oh, I heard the sound of a monkey. I bet that will be up in the tree somewhere. I'm going to have to have a look for that. But first, I can see a zombie on his way. You better stay away, zombie. Or she'll get you comeuppance. Yes, you will. Oops. There you go. Soon had him sorted. But I wanted to find that monkey. I really wanted to find that monkey, but I couldn't figure out where it was. I could not figure out. I could hear another zombie as well somewhere. Oh, God. That made me jump so high. Oh my goodness, that scared me to death. Stupid zombie. So I had a thought that the monkey was on top of a tree that, that was up in the tree somewhere. So I had to go up and have a look. Hmm. Yeah, it was definitely up high. I needed to get higher. So across I went and up I went. And I looked around and saw three monkeys. One of them was a baby. I didn't quite know whether I could get a baby in a net. So I took one of the adults. What am I like? Oh, it's gorgeous. Look at it. Oh, oh that's lovely. So that was another spider monkey to add to our collection. Nice. So I carried on looking through the village and I came across a blacksmith. Not like a blacksmith I've seen before. Ooh, nice. I took those apples as well. And I found another chest full of iron. Well, it wasn't full, but there was a lot of it. That was quite good. I left the leggings and then noticed my boots were nearly done. So I changed my boots and had a new pair of boots, which was quite nice. And there's never been two chests in a blacksmith before, so that was quite good too. I shall have to look for more of these villagers. I'm sure there must be more around. So it was time to start heading back. And it wasn't long before I found something else that distracted me. A shipwreck. I needed to find a way down. There was a lot of bees about. I was thinking I should start collecting those really and have a bee farm. And was that a bald eagle? Now I'd come across a bald eagle before and it nearly killed me. I wasn't recording at the time, otherwise I'd have shown you that, but I knew. I'd have to be quick if I wanted another one. So I was, and I got him. Nice. So, I went over to the boat, axed my way in to see what I could see. And I could see a chest. 
Nice. I opened up the chest and took out a, pres a, a buried treasure map. Nice. Got the paper as well and the feathers. Was there another one? Oh, I could see the bottom of another chest. But there wasn't anything exciting in there, really. But I did take the coal. So now, where was this buried treasure? Looked like I needed to go north. Yep, I needed to go north, which was that way. So I went back this way, over hill and dale, through rivers, over land, and got my boat out in the end. But it wasn't too far away. It wasn't too long before the map started to fill in. There we go. So it's actually on this bit of land over here. So I made my way towards the cross and hoped that this would be an easy one to find. I needed to get myself right under the cross like you could almost not see me. I was covered with the cross. So it must have been round here somewhere. There it was. Awesome. Oh, there was a nice chest full in there. Very nice. I'd already found one treasure map and I'd started mapping out our base but it was far too small. I needed quite a few maps together so I'd have to do that all over again and I'll show you that when I've done it. So I put my treasure maps into my ender chest in order of my finding them so that when I put them on the wall, I like to put treasure maps on the wall, I think they look quite interesting, they'd be in order of me finding them. And it wasn't long before I spotted another shipwreck so I thought hmm I'll have a look at that as well. I had respiration on my helmet, so it wasn't too daunting a task getting down there and not drowning. I was straight in. There it was. Ooh, lots of things in there, but nothing really I was interested in. But I'd take the coal. I quite like collecting coal, I like the chests. I don't think I needed anything else out of there. Now, there should have been another one around here, and there was. There was another buried treasure map. I was going to take that and leave all the rest. And that was that for that ship, I think. So off I went to find the next lot of treasure. Where would it be this time? And we were already filling in the map, so it wasn't very far away at all. But this time I needed to go... Oh, this time I needed to go south. And that was that way. And it seemed to be on this little island to our right here. It was very colourful. Bits of coral everywhere. And a lot more mahogany as well. Yep, we were coming up to it. I needed to turn here. So I followed the cross, headed straight for it and hoped I could get over, right over it and it'd be as easy to find as it was last time. Yep, we were getting there. Over this way. Oh, a bit too far. A bit too far that way. Right, we were getting right under the cross. So that needed to be... A little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. A little shuffle right underneath it. Right, that should be right here somewhere. Did I find it with first go? Hmm. No. No, I wasn't finding it. So I thought I'd, l I'd use that little trick you could use when you found it hard to find the treasure under the cross. So I got my F3 up and I got my chunk boundaries on. And then under chunk it said 13 and 5 at the moment. I was looking for 9 and 9. So 9 then walking forward I was looking for the next 9. Next one, next one. 9 and 9. There it is. So it should be under this one. And <laughs> there it was. It did work. Awesome. A diamond as well. Nice. And there was another one. I was being very lucky on this trip, I can tell you. And this, the chest was right there. I didn't have to go very far at all. And there was another treasure map. Oh, wow. How lucky was I being. And I now I was a level 12 explorer as well. But there was nothing in that second one that I wanted. So out I came. Went up to my boat to see if I could find this one as well. Now this one was southeast, only a little bit south as well. So I got myself heading that way. 
there you can see my journey map markers for things on my base. I'd have to get rid of those. I don't like seeing those when I'm recording. Uh, carried on a little bit. Didn't take long before I was filling in the map. Oh, that looked like that previous island we'd been on. Don't think it was, though. Uh, now I needed to go south. I couldn't see anything south. Is that going in the right direction? That's the thing. A little bit more. I think, oh, things were coming to view. Ah, I was filling it in. I think it was here somewhere. A bit further down. I wasn't seeing me as a beetle on the map, though. That was a bit worrying. But I tend to find that when it's right on the edge of a map, you don't tend to be a beetle, if you know what I mean. And I'd gone straight past it. So it was on this little bit of land jutting out here. So I made for that. Right. So again, it was about getting myself right underneath that cross. I think this might have been a bit awkward because it was right on the edge of the map. And I've always found it quite tricky to get right under the X when it's right on the edge of the map. And I don't know why that is really, but a bit of shifting around. And I got under the X as closely as I could. Yep, I was getting there. But it was awkward enough as it was. So I put on F3 and put on my chunk borders so that I could do the 9-9 trick and see if I could find it straight away. So I was in chunk 7 there. I needed to find where 9 was. A bit further forward there. And then to the right. 9, 9-9. Nine, nine, straight underneath me this one and there it was awesome Ooh, very nice well after three shipwrecks i'd had enough of that i wanted to do a little bit of traveling over land and it wasn't long before i found a snowy tundra and there were some noises i wasn't quite sure what those noises were could i see them on my journey map i had a quick look i wasn't quite sure what they were could they be could they be bears? I wasn't quite sure, so I went up the hill to have a little look. Huh. Mm. Oh, there were bears. There was a bear with a cub. Adorable. Gorgeous. But I went this way because I didn't want it to be attacked. And then next thing I knew, I was down in a hole. I don't know how that happened because I couldn't see a hole. But when I looked up, it was actually snow. <laughs> and then trying to get out, I got down into another hole. Oh dear. So I dug my way out of that, determined this time to stay out of holes. It wasn't long before I was looking at penguins. Adorable. And I knew somebody who was quite partial to penguins, so I thought I'd get a few of these as well. Because if you have a penguin exhibit, you want more than just a couple, because they usually go around in big groups, don't they? So, I nabbed one. Nabbed another. Oh, and then I spotted that bald eagle, so I need to keep my eye on him. And yeah, he took off. He had his eye on me. So I just got another one and then I scarpered. It was time to get back and finish that farm. So with cage in hand, all I needed to do was to place it and make sure that the villager couldn't jump out. But he was another reluctant volunteer. They all seem to like their cages. But it didn't take much to get him in there. In fact, it took a little bit more to get my cage back. Because, of course, it wouldn't come my way, would it? But it didn't take that much to get it back. So now it was just left to see whether the farmer would farm and whether the farmer would actually chuck his wares to the villager. My next adventure was out with Smorf and Rascal. They'd been looking for polar bears. So I joined them. And I just got there in time as Smorf captured a polar bear. Very nicely done, I must say. So I offered to capture the next one. And maybe this would have been the time to get out the tranquilizer gun because the Zawa bears are not quite as friendly as the vanilla bears. Oh, I see. Bear. I found two. I found this oh, two wow. here. Oh, my goodness. Let me just boat. I'm still on the sea at the moment. Hang on a minute. I'm, I'm in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Uh, oh, there's three there. Oh, my goodness. That's uh, small fit pants. Three over there. 
Uh, if I put it here. I want to see this happen. I don't know how far to go before. Are they just going to oh, run that Oh, way? you'll know. Oh, yeah. Oh, but the thing is as well, Gran, you might capture one. What about the other two? Well, they won't all come. Us. They won't all come, will they? Why won't they? Well, if I don't Depends get if in you range. you only attract one. If I, get, if I don't get into range. They're all together, though. Yeah, but I'm just sidling up on this one. They might not, I might not get in their range. He's looking at me. See, they're not even looking at me. Come the on. Rascal just backs away. <laughs> well, I don't want to, I don't want to attract the attention of the other two. She's got, a, she's got a system. Seems like she's got a system, smart. <laughs> <laughs> when they all three start to run at us. Oh, he's coming! He's go. coming! He's yeah. coming! He's coming! Yeah, yeah. Is he following me? Yeah. He he's on you. Oh no! Oh. No! They're supposed to go in the crate! Get in the crate, <laughs> you stupid bear! <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Come on! Oh, dear. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna give him a nudge. You ready? Go on! <gasps> What's yeah, he doing? Stuck. He's got his head stuck in it. Get. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. no. <laughs> yes, Is got it? him. <laughs> Yay, no. Oh, my goodness. Oh, mm. my goodness me. Right, you got two now. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Right, I'm off home. Yeah, tranquilize the gun next time. So next we utilised those spider spawners that I found in the mine shaft, and we asked uh, Tinokin if she would kindly help us to place them, because you have to have ranks to be able to fly and to be able to pick up and place spawners. You could actually change them as well, which was handy. So she was very happy to do that for us. And Smart just finished it off with blocks on top. So they did spawn on top and sit there. And then we just needed to get rid of the blocks. And before you knew it, we were slicing those spiders like nobody's business. And we could get to the all-important string. Not to mention the spider eyes and the XP, of course. The Smorph suggested changing my job to Hunter so I could get all the rewards from killing all the spiders. And that worked out really well. And each time you went up a level, it told you in chat so you could go in and see what you'd achieved. And some of the rewards were really useful. I was just on money at the moment. $250? Not bad. Then we turned our attention to a creeper farm and Tinikin very kindly helped us with that too. And we had two spider spawners that she kindly changed into creepers for us. Once we all got our elytras, we'd need that gunpowder. So that was going to be very useful. Nice. And it was quite effective, I must say. Two spawners produced quite a lot of creepers. Very nice. And the gunpowder was finding its way into the chests. So that was good to see as well. Very nice. It wasn't long before I was roaming about again, trying to get my elytra. Because you had to travel for that. And capturing animals and insects was becoming quite addictive. Butterflies. I think I'd need at least two of each kind to make a pretty butterfly house. But I did want giraffes as well, so I thought I'd start collecting them now. I did get my gun and tranquilizer out, but then I wondered, well, they're not quite like bears, are they? Although they are big, they might be quite sedate. So I thought I'd try without the tranquilizer, because I didn't want to tranquilize them unnecessarily. But it was a bit of a juggle getting them in the cage, I must say. But there were no signs of them attacking me, so I felt quite safe doing that. I don't think he was going to walk in by himself. I was making this very difficult, really. What I needed to do was to get him on a flat bit and then see if I could just shove him in. He was a bit gorgeous, though. Mind you, I don't know if it was a he or a she. It's just a pity he had to be at this end to shove him forward, though. Not the best end, is it? But it didn't take long before I'd captured my first giraffe. And then I wanted more. 
and I spotted some not too far away, but I did make a wide berth around a tarantula. I really don't like them out of cages. I spotted some kangaroos over there as well, but I think I might wait a little bit later before I actually get some of those. I will be having an enclosure for those at some point. So I thought I'd go for this giraffe standing there on his own, only when I got a bit near him he did shift his position. So I hoped that I could get him. If I could get this cage just behind him, I might be able to actually shove him in. Or her in. So there I was again, shoving the behind of a giraffe. But in he went, which was fantastic. So then it was time for some less exciting stuff, collecting resources. And I was collecting blocks for the build of the welcome center. I'd be working out some block pallets with Rascal and Smorf. And Smorf had come up with some really, really nice ideas. But it meant collecting them. And terracotta was going to feature quite a bit. And just before I end this episode, I will give you a sneak peek of what I'm planning for the Welcome Centre. So my idea is that the Welcome Centre is actually going to be situated centrally, or as centrally as I can get it, in the middle of the zoo. And in the middle of the Welcome Centre, there's going to be a tower. And at the top of the tower, there'll be a viewing platform. And that's all I'm going to say for this week. So in next week's episode, I'll be showing you how I built it. So that's it for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, give us a thumbs up if you can. And please subscribe because it really helps out my channel. And a big thank you to everybody that replied. I really enjoy your comments. I'll read them all and I'll reply to them all. So take care, everybody. And I'll see you in the next episode.